Well, hello there. So good to be with you once again as we study God's Word together. <clears throat> Today we are going to be looking at the book of Revelation, chapter 4. The book of Revelation, chapter 4. <clears throat> We're going to be talking about the uh, throne room of God. And if you have a Bible at home, I would encourage you to pick it up <clears throat> and turn together with me to Revelation chapter 4, and uh, we'll study God's Word together uh, today. Well, as always, let's look to the Lord in a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your Word. We thank you for giving it to us, and we thank you for the opportunity today to study and to learn more of you and who you are, and we just ask that you give us wisdom and understanding. Teach us by your Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the last several uh, times we've been together, we, we were looking at the seven churches in Revelation chapters 2 and 3. And now we enter into a section in the book of Revelation, chapters 4 and 5, which uh, deals with a scene that takes place in heaven. I believe, based on um, some passages that we're going to look at, uh, even, even today, that this um, scene is going to take place right after the rapture of the church, um, and uh, perhaps uh, just before the start of the tribulation period. <clears throat> So here we have in Revelation chapter 4, beginning in verse 1, we read, After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice that I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be here after. So notice the first two words in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, after this, or, or literally uh, after these things. The, these things are referring to the seven letters to the seven churches of Asia Minor. In other words, uh, John is saying that after the period of the churches, or after the time of the churches, after the church age, John sees a door that was open in heaven. Now, I believe this is a reference to Jesus Christ stepping out of heaven to come and get his bride, the church, the body of Christ, uh, or it is the door opening for church saints to enter into heaven at the rapture. Notice that after the church age, John hears the voice of a trumpet that says, Come up hither. I think this is significant, the fact that he hears, as it were, uh, of a trumpet. It wasn't a literal trumpet, but it, as it were, a trumpet, using a simile there. Uh, that was talking to him, and it said, come up hither. Uh, I want to take a moment to turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, jumping directly down to verse 16, where Paul the Apostle writes, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I find Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 tying into 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 16 and 17. And this is the rapture of the church, when the Lord descends from heaven to the air 
and he, and he descends with a shout, or literally a command, a shout of command. And um, this is with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. I believe the shout of command is going to be, Come up hither. And all those who know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior will be caught up together with the believers who have gone before us, who have died and are with the Lord right now in heaven. When the rapture takes place, if we're still alive, then we'll be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And then we are taken back to heaven to, um, to uh, be at the Bema Seat of Christ where we'll receive our rewards. Uh, I believe that's what this is in reference to, the rapture of the church. Uh, Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Come up hither. So the door is open. The, the, the voice says, come up hither. And John is taken up. Uh, into heaven to then see what he sees in Revelation 4, which we'll get into. Paul the Apostle also mentions in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 52, concerning the rapture, he says that we will be uh, taken in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised and corruptible, and we shall be changed. So John most likely hears the voice of a trumpet that says, Come up hither. Well, where was John at this time? Well, we know Revelation chapter 1 reminds us that John the Apostle was uh, on the Isle of Patmos. So he is taken from the Isle of Patmos uh, to heaven. And now that he is in heaven, he's going to be shown things which must be hereafter. This fits right into the outline that we mentioned in Revelation chapter 1, the outline to the book of Revelation, and that's found in Revelation 119, where Jesus tells John to write the things which thou hast seen. That's chapter 1, the vision of Jesus Christ, the risen Christ. And then he was to write the things which are, those are the seven churches of, of Revelation chapters 2 and 3. And then he was to write the things which shall be hereafter. Well, that starts in chapter 4, verse 1 all the way to the end of the book in chapter 22. It also perfectly fits into what other passages um, in the scripture that deals with the pre-tribulation rapture view. That is that Jesus Christ is going to come back to rapture the church before the start of the seven year tribulation period that is outlined in chapter 6 through 19 of the book of Revelation. John was on earth during chapters 1 through 3, and now in chapter 4, he's taken to heaven to be here throughout the tribulation period. So here we are, presently, in the days of the church, Revelation chapters 2 and 3, and we are awaiting Revelation 4, 1, the shout of command to come up hither, to be taken to heaven to be with the Lord. So the next event on God's calendar is the rapture of the church. All right, let's keep going in Revelation chapter 4, in verse number 2. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardius stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like an emerald. So when John is received up into heaven, the first thing he saw was a throne set in heaven and someone sitting upon that throne. The one sitting upon the throne is God the Father. That will become more clear here uh, in a minute, and it will become even more clear in chapter 5. John gives no anthropomorphic description of God the Father because God is spirit. He has no form. John says that looking at the one sitting upon the throne was like looking at a jasper and a sardius stone. 
The jasper stone is similar to a brilliant diamond. The sardius stone is similar to a blood red ruby. What John is seeing here is the glory of God. And notice in verse number uh, 3 it says that there was a rainbow round about the throne in the sight like an emerald. The emerald is green colored. Now why this circular rainbow around the throne? The first appearance of the rainbow in scripture is in Genesis 9 after God had destroyed the earth with a flood. He promised Noah and all of his descendants that he would never again destroy the world by a flood. Perhaps this rainbow around the throne is to remind us that although God is going to judge this world through tribulation judgments, he will not destroy it in the same way that he did in Noah's day. Now verses uh, 4 and 5, we find John seeing 24 elders that are uh, around the throne worshiping God. Verse 4, and round about the throne were four and twenty thrones, and upon the thrones I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderclaps and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. So around the throne, John sees 24 thrones, and 24 elders are sitting upon the thrones. Who are these 24 elders? Well, I have found four major uh, interpretations, four different interpretations of the 24 elders. Some suggest that these 24 elders are angels. Some suggest that they are representatives of Israel. Some suggest that they are representatives of both Israel and the church. And some suggest that they are representatives of church saints. I think the key to the interpretation of the 24 elders is the five things that are said about them. Let's look at these five things briefly. Uh, number one, they're called elders. Number two, they're sitting upon thrones. Number three, they are clothed in white raiment. Number four, they have crowns of gold upon their heads. And number five, they sing a new song that only the redeemed can sing. We'll see that here a little later. So let's break these down one by one. Number one, the fact that they are called elders. Now, in the Old Testament, Israel had elders. And the New Testament, the church has elders. But in both the Old and New Testaments, angels are never called elders. So if we were going to put a check mark on, on these four different interpretations that people give of who the 24 elders is, I would put an X mark next to angels. Because never once are we told in the scriptures that angels are called elders, okay? But we do have Old Testament Israelites called elders, and the church, uh, there are elders in the church. So that gives us uh, some possible um, three other interpretations here, that it could be representatives of Israel, could be representatives of both Israel and the church, could be representatives of just church saints. So let's look at the second thing that's said about these elders. Number two, they are sitting upon thrones. In the Old Testament, Israel was never promised to sit upon thrones. The twelve apostles in the New Testament, the twelve apostles, are promised to sit upon twelve thrones mentioned in, by Jesus in Matthew chapter 19, verse 28. Church saints are also promised to sit upon thrones. We find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 2 uh, and 3. 
Let me just get there and read that passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 2 and 3. We're told, Paul writes, Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain in this life? So the church saints were, were promised to judge uh, uh, to the world, to be judges. In uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 27, Speaking to the church of Thyatira, Jesus said, The ones that overcome will rule the nations with a rod of iron. We'll be rulers. We'll be judges. Um, and Revelation chapter 3, verse 21, The one who overcomes, Jesus said, I will, I will grant uh, that he sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and sat down at my, at my father's throne. Um, so, Definitely church saints are promised to sit upon a throne, or sit upon thrones to judge, to rule. All right, the third thing mentioned about these elders in Revelation 4, verses 4 and 5, is that these elders are said to be clothed in white raiment. Well, Revelation chapter 6, if we flip over to that chapter, Revelation chapter 6, verse 11, <coughs> excuse me, it says, And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Now these are in reference to tribulation martyred saints, those who will get saved in the tribulation and they will be martyred, killed for their faith in Christ. They are told to have um, white, to be clothed in white raiment. Uh, and we're also told in Revelation chapter 19 concerning church saints that, that the um, white robes are a picture of the righteous deeds of the saints. Now we are told that angels are also robed in white raiment. Matthew chapter 28 verse 3 tells us that. But we, all, we already have an X mark on angels because they're never called elders in scripture. So, so far, it looks like we're leaning towards church saints being the elders. So let's look at the fourth thing uh, that's said about these elders. They are said to have crowns of gold upon their heads. Now, this specific Greek term for crown is the word stephanos, which is used of the crown of thorns that was placed on Jesus Christ, and it is used eight times in the New Testament to refer to crowns that will be given to believers in the church age or during the church age. 1 Corinthians 9.25, we're told that, that church saints will receive an incorruptible crown for running the race with patience, enduring, persevering. 1 Thessalonians 2.19, there will be a crown of rejoicing. 2 Timothy 4.8, there's a crown of righteousness. James 1.12, there's a crown of life. And 1 Peter 5.4, there's a crown of glory. These crowns given to church saints. Angels are never said to be wearing crowns on their head. Old Testament saints are never promised crowns uh, for rewards, but church saints are. So again, it gives us another check mark for these elders referring to church saints. Um, and then finally, the fifth thing that's mentioned about these elders in verses 4 and 5 is that they sing a new song that only the redeemed man, that only the re, uh, uh, redeemed mankind could sing. Um, this is given in chapter 5, verse 8. And when he had taken the scroll of four living creatures and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of saints. And they sang a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for Thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by Thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation. And hast made us unto our God a kingdom of priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Uh, so here we have the elders singing this, this, uh, the song of the redeemed. Well, angels are not redeemed, but uh, mankind is redeemed. 
So uh, I believe the interpretation of the 24 elders are church uh, saints, that is, uh, uh, believers. I think that's a, it's a representation. The 24 elders are representing all born-again believers. Verse 5, John sees the th uh, throne, out of the throne proceeding lightning and, and thunderclaps, voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. So John sees these lightnings and thunderclaps and voices coming out of the throne. We see this phrase mentioned a number of times in the book of Revelation, and it's always associated with God's judgment. No doubt this is a picture of God the Father about to judge the world. John also sees seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. I believe these seven spirits of God go back to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1, which speaks of the seven spirits, spirits which I believe are, represented, are, are, are representing the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. Then in verses 6 through 8 of Revelation 4, we find uh, these uh, four living creatures that are around the throne. Let's take a look at that. Verse 6, And before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal, and in the midst of the throne, around about the throne, were four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind. And the first living creature was like a lion, the second living creature like a cat, the third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. And the four living creatures had each one of them six wings, about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. So John sees in front of the throne of God, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne, round about the throne, were four living creatures who were full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature was like a lion, the second living creature like a calf, the third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying creature. They all had six wings each, and they were full of eyes, and they constantly are saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Well, who are these living creatures? Well, it's very similar to a description we find in Ezekiel chapter 1 concerning cherubs. Cherubs are said to have, are be... They have eyes within and without, and each cherub has four faces, uh, the face of a lion, face of a calf, a man, and, a, and an eagle. But these, uh, this description here in Revelation 4, uh, each living creature had, had a face of, of, of one or the other here mentioned. Not, not, um, they didn't each have four faces, whereas the cherubs in Ezekiel 1, each of them had four faces, and the cherubs have six, uh, have four wings. These have, have uh, six wings. So, possible they could be cherubs. Um, just a little different description here of them than Ezekiel 1. There's also a group of angels, a class of angels called seraphim, we find in Isaiah chapter 6. The seraphim are also around the throne saying, holy, holy, holy. The seraphim have six wings. Um, so it's, it's possible <clears throat> that these are seraphim. Uh, or it's possible that these are, are a different class of angelic beings altogether. John could have simply identified these creatures as seraphim or cherubs, for he was well aware of Ezekiel 1 and Isaiah chapter 6. But uh, he doesn't specifically identify them. So whether they're cherubs or seraphim, we're not told. But they are some kind of angelic uh, uh, class of angels in heaven. And verses 9 through 11, we have the worship of the 24 elders. And when those living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him that is seated on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that is seated on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure 
They are and were created. So when these four living creatures worship the Lord, then the 24 elders fall down and worship God. So there's a wonderful scene in heaven that John gets a glimpse of here as he's taken up into heaven to see the throne room of God where God the Father is seated on the throne. And John sees the, the glory of God, doesn't see a figure, a form. He just sees uh, the glory of God. God the Father is spirit. Jesus Christ is the one that, uh, that has a human body, but God the Father does not. So John sees the glory of God upon the throne and the 24 elders on thrones surrounding the throne of God. They are falling down, worshiping God the Father. And we have these four living creatures that are also around the throne. And they are worshiping God, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. This is, what, this is the first thing that John sees when he is called up to heaven, when he's told, Come up hither. He is taken right into the throne room, and this is what he sees. Wonderful, uh, wonderful picture uh, that John gives us here. Wonderful experience that he had. And then in, in Revelation chapter 5, which we'll look at next time we are together, uh, John is going to give us uh, more information about the, the, the throne room. There's going to be another individual that's going to enter uh, the throne room. And that's going to be the Lamb, and we'll talk about who that is when we get to chapter 5. Uh, but it's important that we, um, that we recognize that uh, John, when he's taken up into heaven, is, is taken into, into the throne room, and this is what he sees. He's told, come up hither. So the question we want to end, or end with, or ask ourselves, is when Jesus Christ descends out of heaven and gives that shout of command, come up hither, are you going to be taken up into the air to meet the Lord and then to be taken to heaven? Will you be amongst those who will be, be taken in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, the last trump? Uh, if you're not saved, you will not be taken. You will be left behind to experience the most dreadful time in world history. That seven-year time block that we're going to look at in detail starting with chapter 6. Uh, if you're not saved, you're going to be left behind to go through that awful time of which you'll, you most likely will not survive. You need to be saved, you need to be born again to escape the wrath, God's wrath in that tribulation period. Trust Christ today. Believe on Him. Accept Him as your Savior. And He'll give you eternal life. And you'll be amongst those who will be taken up when Jesus Christ says, come up hither. Join us next time as we look in detail in Revelation chapter 5.